No, I have muscular dystrophy, which is a rare muscle waste condition. To give you an idea of the effects it has on me, it's like that my facial muscles are falling down, and so is my vagina. <laughs> like, if I want to do a jazzle, it would look like a chandelier. <laughs> I'm Romina. Until a few years ago, my life was pretty normal. I used to have a boyfriend, I used to go out on the pool, I used to get with guys. But then my condition got worse and I started to use a wheelchair. And since then, it's been very difficult to have a sex. Guys just aren't as interested. Even if I use a wheelchair, it doesn't mean that this part of my body doesn't work anymore. Still works very well. So it's been a real struggle. <laughs> yeah, you know, sex and disability. Which it sounds a bit like a remake of Sense and Sensibility. <laughs> but the porn version. <laughs> now I'm going to meet other people in my situation to see how they coped with the challenge in their sex life. I want to know if our society is ignoring disabled people's rights to sex. The day when I was diagnosed was terrible. It was like the world was smashing me down. I didn't know how I was going to end up, so it was, uh, that was in the complete dark. To learn more, I'm off to Sheffield to meet one couple who lived with their disabilities from birth. When you don't look the same as everybody else, people are afraid of that. I had, you know, people around me saying nasty things. I would have parents pulling their children away from me. So that kind of destroys your confidence quite a lot. If you have no confidence, how are you ever going to have a sexual relationship? I just pushed it aside because in my own mind, I was totally undesirable. You see your friends and, and other people around you, Telling me off or, or having relationships. Um, and it, it did not happen for me, and it does make you feel different. You feel not quite equal. I was not scared so much about sex, I was more scared about being accepted. My, my biggest anxiety was will he even want to hold my hand or touch me? How was it meeting uh, Chital? Well, we, we were friends for years before we actually got together. Yeah, um, and Jamie knew who I was and how I am. And then as we got together and developed our relationship, we had sexual confidence with each other. And how this relationship changed you? When you got that stability. Yeah. yeah and you know, there's somebody there who is there for you no matter what. That makes you feel that, that makes yeah. you happier and more confident. There's no way I'm going to ever be able to do all the positions in the Kama Sutra, but hey, show me a person that can. But I think what's more important is that we're actually happy together and whatever we do in the bedroom, we're actually happy together. What would you like to say to the people who still don't recognise the fact that even if we are disabled, we, we, we still need and want a sex life. We're absolutely no different to anybody else. We're human with the same needs, wants, desires uh, as anybody else. And until disabled people are seen as that, yeah. the rest isn't going to happen. In a way, I, I found that their experience is quite similar to mine. It was nice to see that it, they find each other and they can have a, a life together and they, they are accepted for who they are. And uh, so it, give me, it gives me hope. But what if a partner isn't an option or your disability means you need more help? then you could call on a sex worker or a trained therapist. 
It's something that I want to know more about. I'm very much um, working with people to identify you know, where their obstacles are around their sexual pleasure. So that might be they need some education. They need mm -hmm. to understand the basics of you know, adult sexuality. Yeah. It, it might also be, OK, let's have a look at your situation with regards to your, your living situation, your lifestyle situation, your particular disability or, or illness. Mm -hmm. How is that going to affect you having sex with someone and really work out the, the absolute practical aspects of having sex. Sometimes um, I've had um, clients, disabled clients, who could be something really simple um, like severe arthritis. So how do they actually figure out how to experience pleasure for themselves when their hands aren't moving mm -hmm. and they might not even be able to hold a sex toy. Mm -hmm. So rather than just focus on one particular area, or it, it's giving a chance to, you know, really experience touch all over the body. Mm -hmm. What works really well? What are the areas that are really sensitive? Are there areas that maybe we can work together to wake up a bit more? Mm -hmm. So I have um, co colleagues, trained colleagues, who can be then available to actually um, for them to have some practice. It's almost like skills practice. Okay. <laughs> because it's a set yeah. of skills. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> the difficulties that the disabled people uh, go through, what, what do you see, what's the difference? When they're not acknowledged, it can lead to like depressive conditions. Mm -hmm. It can lead to real frustration mm -hmm. because they are often, they're surrounded by carers, so they do receive touch, but it's very functional. Yeah. Um, and you know that is an erotic that can be an erotic experience, but they can't do anything with it. Yeah. So that that can cause all sorts of um, issues for them. Yeah. But then to suddenly be in a situation where it, not with their carers, but with someone else, where they can say, you know, I feel horny, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. You know, and and when that can it, to have that door opened for them, yeah. I think that's what can make such a big difference. Yeah. If a person with a disability goes to their GP or happens to have an interaction in a hospital or whatever it is, and is saying, how do I get the support I need? That there's not, a, there's not only the attitude change, but there's, yes, this is what's available in the area. This is how to make that first step. I was diagnosed when I was 23, and I'm 50 in about two weekends. I had many girlfriends, then I was diagnosed, and I had many, many more, because it was a race. So you were a playboy? Uh, yes. <laughs> I think because I was in a rush before I hit a wheelchair, which I've done now. Uh, and okay. it's true. As soon as you one's bum hits a wheelchair, you're not at all interesting to anyone else. When you couldn't get the, the ladies yes. anymore and... Yeah, so that's when I started to pay for a sex work as prostitutes. They were great in they were in for an hour, then they would leave and that's it, no worries. Do you have only one sex worker who comes along or...? And now I choose new ones every time, but it's only once a month, okay. at the most, really. Why don't you keep the same uh, sex worker? Ah, again, good question, but I don't do it because it don't, I don't want to get too attached. Oh, OK. And it's nice to just see them for an hour, hour and that's that. And that's My God. It. So what we do, get naked, love being naked, and uh, get her naked even better. <laughs> oh yes, and so then what I like and what works for me is oral sex a lot, lots of more sex is good. Mm -hmm. But after those sessions, do you feel better? Mentally I do, I feel great because you know, you've done something that you've longed to do for most of your life. Sex workers before a girlfriend we were essential, really essential, just to meet my needs. If it's being a voyeur or whatever, 
it is for the actual physical process, so it was all necessary. Well, I've, I'm, yeah. I'm quite obsessed with sex, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I kind of did the same thing that you did before you end up in a wheelchair. I tried to, yeah. to get as much as, as, much as I could. And, uh, and now it's really, really hard. It was nice to see how his journey was to get to the realization of how hard it is to have sex uh, when you are disabled. And is that something that you have considered doing before? To use a sex worker? Uh, sometimes, yes, I thought about it because um, sometimes you really need uh, a human contact, you know, a touch or... But so far, uh, I, never, I never contacted one. But it's there in my draw, you know. The way the people look at me uh, is, is completely different. They look at you in a kind of a sympathy or pity way. That is so annoying. They don't see me as a person anymore. The, the thing that they see is just the wheelchair and they can't get over it. I'm on my way to meet one man who's worked hard to get women to see past his wheelchair. Andy was 36 when a motorbike accident changed his life. Most people that see you in a wheelchair just think you can't walk. And I say, trust me, walking is the last thing that interests me, you know. It's bladder bowels, sexual function. After his accident, Andy proposed to his girlfriend, but later the relationship broke down. The sex was kind of hard to start off with because you were experimenting. I mean, basically, they'll give you some Cialis or some, some Viagra or something and just say, right, we'll go away and try that. You know, we never actually had any counselling on, mm. on uh, not, not what to do, but, you know, on, on how it's going to work. And to the point that um, when we got married, mm. uh, from the time we split up, which was a very short period, we didn't even actually consummate the marriage. You know, you, you're just thinking, well, I, I can't feel my penis, what's the point? I'm not going to, I'm not going to enjoy sex. It's, you know, there's, it, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a waste of time. And I, it would get to the stage where Laura would be like, saying, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to bed now, are you coming up? So I would find myself making excuses and said, I'll just watch the end of this film, love, and I'll be up, knowing that by the time I went up, Laura would be asleep. Yeah, so you didn't have any, any sort of advice or some help? Uh, no, not really. Just, just, of... just with the, you know, you trying different kinds of tablets and yeah. stuff. But um, I've learned a lot of things since that time um, that actually you, you don't need, even need to have penetrative sex to enjoy it. Is it more like interesting and more like uh, that you can explore other things? Without a doubt, yeah. And it, it's, yeah, it's more fun. It is more fun, yeah. It is more fun. And it lasts longer. Yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, you discover. Yeah, and the parts of my body that I can feel are more sensitive, you know? So like, I've got the most hypersensitive nipples in the mm. world, you know? So someone's just got to go like that and yeah. it's a, it's a sense of pleasure. I mean, one day I was having sex and um, I guess it would have been probably at the point when I would have ejaculated and you get kind of like a tingling feeling, almost like a spasm and it comes, comes from here and it's like all the way down my body into my legs. And what it has done is totally turned the way I have sex upside down and to, to coin a cliche, I suppose it's, you know, you're, you're actually making love rather than just having sex. Give 
us a chance, just talk to me and I'll show you that I have a brain, I can make a conversation, I might can make you even laugh and uh, it's going to be fun in the bedroom as well, you know? And I was doing some research and I found the Kama Sutra for disabled. <laughs> Even through my comedy, I'm trying to raise a bit of awareness and, you know, I hope that, you know, we're going to get to the point where we're going to be considered like any other person and not just, you know, you're disabled. Eh. <laughs> Guys, you've been amazing. I've been Domina Puma. Thank you very much.